Hey, this is Dr. Barry. For just a few minutes, let's talk about a very important topic, the hemoglobin A1C measurement, or the A1C, or the glycated hemoglobin. This is a very important lab marker that you should know about. You should know what it means, and you should know why you should care about this. And that's what, that's what this video is going to be about. There are millions of Americans and people of the world who have prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, and they have absolutely no clue that they have this. And that's because very often they'll go see their doctor once a year, and he'll check a fasting blood sugar. And if that number's normal or just a little bit high, he'll say, well, it's fine. No big deal. We'll check it again next year. And without checking an A1C or another test, then you have no idea if that fasting blood sugar really gives the full tail or if it does not. Now, if you think that you would like to hear breaking medical news, medical research based in common sense, plus a little dash of ancestral appropriateness of the things that you eat and the things that you do and the things that your doctor say, please consider subscribing to this channel and click the little bell right beside it so that every time I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know. Now let's talk about A1C. So hemoglobin is a protein that's in and on your red blood cells. Your red blood cells carry oxygen, among other things, around your body. Right. And so the hemoglobin is a very important part of the red blood cell. It's a protein. And the average red blood cell lives for about 120 days, give or take. And there are many different diseases and medications and other things that can change the length, the average length of time that a red blood cell lives. But on average, they live about 120 days. And so as the time goes on, glucose, which is in your bloodstream normally, will stick to the hemoglobin part of the red blood cell. And the higher your blood sugar is, the more glucose molecules will stick to that hemoglobin or glycate it. And that's why we call it glycated hemoglobin. That's what some older doctors talk, call this test. Hemoglobin A1C is a subfraction, and that's the, the subfraction we actually measure to see how much it's been glycated. And that gives us a rough three-month average of what your blood sugar has been running. Uh, so the higher your blood sugar, the higher the A1C is going to be. And so this blood sugar that sticks to the red blood cells, if your blood sugars are always normal, then that's pretty normal to have a few little um, glucose molecules attached to the hemoglobin part of your red blood cell. But if you have too many, it kind of mucks up your system. It, it causes damage to the red blood cells. It damages all the other cells of your body. And that's why we want you to keep your glucose level as low normal as you possibly can. So as we said, the A1C gives us a three-month average look at what your blood sugar has been doing. Now, the beauty of the A1C test is you can check it any time of day. If you check a fasting blood sugar, that has to be done fasting. And so for most people, that means first thing in the morning, unless your doctor's mean and makes you fast for hours and hours, or if, you, if he just has 50 people come into his office first thing in the morning to check a fasting blood sugar, you can see how that would kind of gum up the works of the medical practice. And so one of the beautiful things about the A1C is that you can check it any time of day and you can check it whether you're fasting or whether you're not. And so that gives us much more leeway in our practice to check this on everybody and also get a much deeper look at what your glucose metabolism has been up been up to lately. The American Diabetes Association and the American Academy of Family Physicians both approve this, the A1C test, as a method of both diagnosing diabetes, of diagnosing prediabetes, and of managing both of those things. And by managing, I mean reversing, but some doctors just mean managing. But, but the, all of the big regulatory bodies rec re recognize the hemoglobin A1C as a way to diagnose and, and follow. It's uh, not some experimental test. It's been tried and, and, and proven numerous times. And so for a normal person with no sign of glucose uh, mal metabolism, you can get this checked once a year. Check your A1C once a year. And if it's even one tenth of a point high, 
you are now pre-diabetic, which means you have to get deadly serious with your diet and your lifestyle and reverse that before it goes any further. You definitely want to never become a type 2 diabetic. And the way you do that is by fixing your diet before it gets out of hand. So the levels that we usually talk about with an A1C, anything under 5.7 5.7 is considered normal, okay? And I actually like it to be lower than that. But most doctors will say if you're 5.6 or lower, that's normal. And a, a, an A1C of 5.7 corresponds with an average blood sugar of about 117, which is not terrible. If you have an A1C between 5.7 and 6.4, then you are a pre-diabetic. And that, that the, the blood glucose range would be 118 to 139. That's what the average blood sugar would give you an A1C of 5, 5.7 to 6.4. Any number above 5.6 is terrible. You need to immediately focus your entire attention on fixing that with your diet. Now, if your A1C C level is 6.5 or higher, my condolences, you are now a type 2 diabetic. That's the bad news. The good news is you can reverse that with your diet. And so that's what the A1C is. Now, any of you guys out there, if you're if you're using low carb, high healthy fat, or keto, or even carnivore, and you've lowered your A1C, I want you to put in the comments what your your before and after A1Cs were because so many people are discovering this way of eating and they don't realize how powerful it is. And so if they've just been to the doctor and they've got a high A1C and they see your comment, you know, lowered my A1C from 8.4 to 5.3, they're going to go, what the heck? I could do that too because he did it. So put in the comments what you've done with your A1C with a low carb or a keto or a carnivore diet. Now, there's a share button right under this video. If you'll click that, you can share this with anybody who needs to to understand this information. If you have any friends or family with a high blood sugar or with prediabetes, they need to know exactly what the A1C means and what they can do about it. I've got numerous other videos on this channel about diabetes and prediabetes and what you can do to reverse those conditions. Now, if I've already helped you reverse type 2 diabetes or some other medical condition, you can always help me out to have more time to make videos just like this by clicking on my Patreon link. It's right down below you. It's a very quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I'll have more time to make more videos just like this. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.